This video is of the uh, the uh, cab ride on the route of the Liverpool Overhead Railway as uh, as Bob has created it um, at this point using our our uh, various models and bits and bobs and um, he's using um, a number of uh, built-in items just to illustrate the um, where the new models are going to go that we've yet to create and this is actually in a, meant to be in a tunnel this will be in a tunnel this is the underground section we've just left Dingle station which was the southern terminus of the Liverpool overhead railway and remarkably it started off as or the, the railway uh, southern terminus was underground so the overhead railway begins at an underground station and um, it's now heading uh, towards the tunnel exit which is marked by um, this uh, built-in um, uh, tunnel f uh, face, tunnel entrance, exit and uh, so once we're through here then we're out in the open air and we're crossing over the bridge this is going to be replaced with an accurate model of the or hopefully accurate model because I'll be making it <laughs> and we're swinging around the bend here that's the site over on the left is the site of the original Herculaneum dock station and uh, before it was uh, extended to the south and over to the left there there'll be quite a range of freight lines because we do intend to bring all those in and we're coming into Herculaneum, the new Herculaneum dock station and this is just being represented by one of the built-in stations, uh, AG, AJS uh, station um, actually I think it's two singles there and this is where one of the crossovers was and of course the, the track will be uh, we'll be changing that so that it, the um, third rail breaks before the crossing properly and um, uh, Bob has set this up to run uh, as close to the original uh, uh, timetable between trains about 10 minutes between each train and a maximum speed always of 30 miles an hour and at the moment we are doing 30 going around some of these bends uh, and you can see here the refuges which um, we've added uh, just since, since the last version of this so this is constantly evolving and obviously this is just comprising the viaduct parts and the track that we've created so far and over on the left and on the right to a lesser extent you can see Bob is using uh, textures to uh, mark out where some of the main structures are going to be particularly the docks themselves so having left Herculaneum dock we're now in um, Toxteth uh, Street I think it's Toxteth dock actually st uh, station or Toxteth station <coughs> I'm, I'm using a very small version of the route map here trying to read it while I'm looking at this as well and uh, uh, the, the signals were, uh, as you can see here, were two aspect colour lights. They were quite revolutionary for their time in the late Victorian period. And at the moment we're using uh, built-in signals. So these will be uh, replaced by uh, the actual models of the actual signals because these ones, if nothing else, are positioned too far away, far to the, to the left and, uh, of the track, too far outside the track. So having le left um, Toxteth Dock Station, uh, we're then heading towards Brunswick Dock Station. And over on the left are the, <coughs> uh, are the markings. You can actually see uh, Bob has used uh, some of the text to even spell out the names of some of the docks that are going to be there. And it's our aim to uh, produce the docks themselves, that is the dock walls, gates and the surface. Uh, but you'll need to add warehouses, uh, whatever. And of course, there's not that many on uh, trains. So here we are coming into Brunswick Dock Station. And um, so the greater the variety of warehouses that we can produce, the better. And in fact, if you are a trains modeler and you're a um, specialist in modeling um, buildings or you fancy having to go at modeling buildings, then, um, and you'd like to make some for, for the, this, uh, it's going to be quite an incredible layout I think because the whole dock system uh, my intention our intention is to definitely is to model the whole dock system as well which is a heck of a lot of freight lines uh, spreading coming from the right and spreading out to the left and also running underneath the uh, Liverpool overhead railway uh, throughout its entire 
uh, journey the uh, through most of its uh, journey not its entire journey but most of it had a double line of freight uh, only uh, rails set into cobbles that interconnected across up and down into the different docks part of the Liverpool dock system so having left Brunswick dock station we're now heading round towards uh, Wapping dock station the curves are we try to c gently curve the track as much as possible some of the curves are really quite severe up to 20 degree curves um, on the um, on the overhead so we try to as it were that the viaduct itself does dog legs but the track itself uh, the track we're trying to curve that more gently around so it's a mix of fixed track sections and using track splines on top of a viaduct spline to create the geometry and of course at all of these stations these are just simply placeholders all of this has got to be replaced um, and um, and indeed I think the passengers have got to be replaced as well because although you know they don't look too bad um, <coughs> I think they're far too recent they're sort of you know not quite sure 60s 70s um, and we're, we're looking for 1920s 1930s period for the whole layout so uh, we'll be looking out for a passenger set suitable passenger set so again if you're a modeler and you fancy making a 1920s 1930s passenger set then um, that we can use in the layout then please do get in touch either post a comment on the video um, we're now heading towards um, custom house station and um, either post a uh, uh, comment on the video uh, or send me an email um, from uh, my trains um, website or from the trains forum you'll find all under ing for train for numeral four trains on the left here bob has put in a number of um, built-in do uh, dockside warehouse or just generally warehouse industrial buildings to more to indicate where there will be uh, the structures uh, though in the early day in the early stages we're going to have to use quite a few built-in structures and these don't look too bad uh, comparatively speaking you'll notice the floating station there <laughs> and this so this is us coming into custom house station custom house was uh, bombed out during the second world war and never replaced so uh, again that's a distinctive building that we would very much like to uh, model the signaling system was automatic it was triggered by the trains themselves and um, uh, meant there could be quite an intensive service 10 minute interval services uh, was the norm during the day in the evenings much less because there just wasn't the traffic uh, but very heavily used indeed during the daytime especially um, uh, when uh, dockers had to come in for the um, for the ships so this is um, James Street station coming up and uh, you can see there's another bridge just beyond the station <coughs> a number of these bridges uh, several of them did lift to allow access for smaller vessels to move from the docks on the left to smaller docks older much older docks on the right and uh, it's certainly our intention to reproduce those um, reproduce those bridges and to um, ensure we get uh, the right range of lifting bridges so um, there's one of them in fact which is a double deck lifting bridge that was a section of the uh, I just noticed there on the top of the girder on the left of the viaduct that the rivet detail disappears and reappears there even though they're both the same spline I think it's the bridge that's affecting that anyway um, yeah double lifting bridge which uh, was for the Liverpool overhead um, so this is at, at, at Pierhead station perhaps the center of the line the busiest station of the line I cannot see us keeping these passengers <laughs> these passenger sets they do not look the part they're fine for checking it out but we will need something a bit more period I think so that's Pierhead station and of course that's where all the ferries ferry across the Mersey etc goes from to this day and uh, so we've got quite a bit of modeling to do there 
and it's also where there's the uh, the docks we've left the, as it were the southern docks now we're moving into the more sort of central and, and northern docks area um, of Liverpool yes I can see that bridge is affecting the rivets on the top of the girders and I've also noticed occasionally that on some of the fixed track curve sections that the track alignment just needs to be tweaked just a little bit and this is why we're doing uh, running um, uh, models along the um, overhead as it exists with nothing else in place because we want to get the viaduct absolutely right while still uh, working on producing the um, powered car the, the motor carriage which is the first one I'm working on and once we can get that running um, well, we'll be able to uh, make this look even better I mean it looks fantastic at the moment the accuracy is so where are we coming into this is Prince's dock station the accuracy is spot on uh, Bob has managed to uh, using the odometer top right and the um, to give us the distances uh, between signals and uh, and also the absolute distances that the train has traveled um, so far we've been 11 minutes on the Liverpool overhead and we've traveled 3.175 miles as you can see from the top right display there so he's used those uh, measurements plus um, the measurements as released in the uh, different reference or the couple of uh, books that we have about the local overhead um, so there we are leaving uh, Prince's dock station we're on the way to um, Clarence dock station which is the one where there are the most uh, photographs I think that are still extant you can see there maybe on that curve yes that one there and maybe that one that's the same one the other turned around I need to tweak the track a little bit just to get the exact position of must be a, a fraction of an inch out just uh, I, I notice that all the time I'm a great one for the for the track okay so <clears throat> yes the position of the stations is um, as accurate as, as we can possibly make it I mean Bob has really worked hard to get the uh, positions of the stations precisely okay, and we've used those um, the books that are out on the Liverpool overhead we've got copies here's, a, here's one coming the other way so we must be 10 minutes into the yes there we are 10 minutes 12 seconds and there we are passing it okay it's an AEC GWR rail car but you know what the heck it's just to try it out so uh, yes this position of the stations related to the books but also with the Ordnance Survey 6 inch of the mile maps which we've consulted um, quite extensively and, and had quite a bit of to and fro in to try and get the exact um, distances between stations so we've been very careful to try and achieve that there's a couple of characters in that character set that might be suitable not many though, certainly not these ladies right <clears throat> okay so here we are now at Clarence Dock Station and you can see that um, there's a uh, uh, and that after an, the next station which is um, let me see I'm trying to read it here Nelson Dock Station is the next one along I'm using um, a rather small map from the little book seven stations to Dingle seven, 17 stations to Dingle said and you can see that Nelson Dock then after in front of us at Nelson Dock Station uh, the, the line dips down quite dramatically this is a bit of a um, you know there's always a, a quite a remarkable site that the trains will come off the viaduct and although we've used uh, a viaduct spline to take them down to that level uh, they actually come off the viaduct quite near the much closer to the station and it's an embankment down and then it's ducking under you can see there's a railway overbridge there and it's going to duck under that railway overbridge that's carrying the um, the uh, live um, Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway freight line across to its um, coal discharge points at a high level uh, for, to, for shipping uh, coal into colliers so it has to be at that higher level and Liverpool overhead couldn't um, come in at the same height uh, it, it was after the Lancashire and Yorkshire had built their line so naturally the, the new arrival has to adapt to what's already there so we've got this descent down to the switchback descent down to get underneath the Lancs and Yorks coal line which is what we do there and that will be um, on an embankment and with this three rail track um, 
uh, to, with conventional sleepage because the track at the moment um, and we're heading, he heading towards um, Huskisson Dock Station the um, track at the moment um, is on the rather remarkable um, Liverpool Overhead Railway system it's got this curious uh, uh, hemispheric uh, track uh, patented track base and then you've got the shoes mounted the chairs rather for the track mounted on those and then the third rail has uh, conductors uh, for it and the conductors are actually more frequent than on the original and has tried to work a way around that but haven't been able to do that um, it's because um, it's dictated by the shortest length of viaduct fixed track viaduct that we needed to construct the route which was five foot long and which we had one um, one insulator on so that meant the frequency of insulators is about 150% uh, from the original so it's about um, a half as many again insulators as on the original but I don't think the effect is too bad uh, I think it's quite looks quite okay okay so that was Huskis and then we're now heading towards Canada Dock Station and uh, you can see again the spread of docks out to the left there it's going to be a very extensive network and uh, the idea we're sort of chucking around with is to produce models outline models of the docks so it should be the dock walls the surface as I say and the dock gates and I'm tempted to make these fixed track items so that they actually click together and you end up with the whole sweep of the docks in place and um, and of course if I release them separately or we release them rather separately as fixed track items then for other layouts you can just fit, fit them together however you want there will be um, as I say the surface of the docks themselves the size where you can put in cranes and warehouses and all the rest of it so that was Canada Dock Station the next one is going to be Brocklebank Dock Station <coughs> so the docks will um, click together but of course you can rearrange them if you want to um, once they're released as individual fixed track items the, um, the, the, the objective though is to have the surface uh, the ground level of the docks stretch back to the right um, and to be mainly cobbled or just a, a, a sort of um, um, I don't know, sort of a concretey grey surface so that you can then blend it in with the um, ground level and to have them actually I suspect they'll probably need to be just uh, an inch or two below uh, zero ground height and that's so that um, it will blend into the terrain and of course in the docks themselves you'll need to lower the terrain down to the level of um, the, the bottom of the dock and then put the water in the other aspect about this um, if anybody's up for um, model making are ships Liverpool handled a heck of a lot of ships and if you go onto YouTube and look at some of the old videos there of a, a journey on the Liverpool overhead and it's focuses on you know the cameraman is, is filming docks basically and there's ship after ship after ship so there's only a limited number of suitable ships on trains and um, I've tended to do sort of very basic models of sailing ships uh, but um, really uh, we could do with some some dating from about 1890 to 1930 that sort of period so early steam powered um, and oil burning I suppose um, powered ships so that's Brocklebank Dock and we're heading up now towards Alexandra Dock which is the um, penultimate, no it's not the penultimate it's, uh, we've still got another, we've got Gladstone Dock to do before we cut, swing round for the final uh, Northern Terminus and just looking at it again we're doing 30 miles an hour which is the maximum uh, and we've been at this now for 19 minutes 18 seconds and we travelled five, just over five and a half miles. This is spot on to, for the journey time for these trains. They're very frequent, fast moving, quick acceleration, quick uh, braking, and offering a very frequent service, as I say, every 10 minutes. So uh, really we're talking about a uh, quite an intensive functioning line. 
There was also, so here we are now in, um, where are we, in Alexandra Dock Station. And definitely we're going to have to replace these passengers. They look far too comfortable because when the wind blew and the spray blew or when it, when it rained, then these stations could be quite exposed. Although when we do kind of model the stations, you'll be able to see that there is a lot of um, protection from the elements or a fair bit of protection, just sort of as windscreens and that sort of thing. And of course, that's why the, the nickname for this uh, overhead railway is the Docker's Umbrella. Because when it rained, I suppose, if they had the time, the dockers could shelter from the rain um, under the Liverpool overhead. And, um, gosh, that's some quite sharp curves out of Alexandra Dock, isn't it? But again, we've tried our utmost to get them as smooth as possible. But looking at the photographs, we're pretty much there. Uh, there's, there's, I can't see any, you know, real big difference at all. In fact, I can't see any difference between the curves that um, we put in that Bob has done and um, and the actual uh, running of the line. So here we are now, we're coming into Gladstone Dock Station, which is the penultimate station of the line. You can see the line swinging away in the distance to the right there. And uh, that will be, I'll explain when we get there just where that is going to be. So this is uh, basically a very um, intensive urban daytime very busy nighttime hardly so um, industrial overhead railway uh, with all that magnificent vista of the docks over to the left there I suppose this guy with the newspaper or the one next to him one he's just disappeared but the other one I'm not sure about the guy with the hat looks a bit awkward doesn't it um, well we'll see what we can do so the signals are just there to uh, indicate where they are and the trains operating the signals of course uh, it'll all become much clearer as, as we proceed. So here we are now we've left Alex, uh, Gladstone Dock Station and we're going to swing around sharply to the right towards the northern terminus which was C4 Sands Station which is where I paused this cab ride. As it swung round the original C4 terminus was straight ahead uh, and but it swung round here to make a new station with uh, uh, a connection with the Langston Yorks uh, railway and uh, it's on the outside of this curve over to our left where you'll see a couple of tracks down at ground level and uh, this is the location I'll just pause it there we are down at ground level and there you can see the um, ground level tracks that is marking the old C4 station um, or rather it's where the um, depot maintenance depot was situated uh, and we're going to model that it's a two level depot with a, a train lift uh, so here we are just coming into C4 sands now and this is a curved station again it's, it's most of these stations going to have to be individual bespoke modeled and uh, we're just going to come in, come to a stop and pick up some rather unlikely looking Liverpool overhead railway passengers. <laughs> right, and I'm going to pause it there. And I'm going to leave the, um, I'm going to leave the cab road and just go into the overhead just to give you an idea of what's involved so although we've got another crossover there there were a few these are emergency crossovers they weren't regularly uh, or heavily used so just that just is just the tail off back down to the connection with the Langston and Yorks this is quite a complicated you, you can see here Bob is indicating it's quite a complicated junction there crossover junction but if I come back along the line and I pull back out so that we get the you begin to see, there we are, look, there's Alexandra 1 dock. And this is all marking out where the docks are going to be. Brockle Bank, Canada, there we are. Huskisson number 3. So, there we are, that's our cab ride along the, our project of the Liverpool Overhead Railway. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you can help with making models of warehouses, cranes, dock cranes, or if you've got any information about dock cranes, 
decent scale plans would be invaluable. I'd love to have access to some of those so that we could make some really good uh, 1920s period dockside cranes. Uh, if you fancy making some ships, there's going to be lots of docks to fill up. And it'd be nice not to have the same ship reappearing again and again and again. Uh, so if you fancy making some ships, as I say, I've made some of my own, including of course Brunel's brilliant Great Eastern. And although the 1920s it had long disappeared, uh, this was the only port that she could really use, apart from Milford Haven, because she was so big. So the ghost of the Great Eastern just off the coast would be quite nice. This is where she was broken up, of course, as well. So there we are, the Liverpool Overhead Railway uh, project is, as you can see, advancing. There's a lot of models. The more we make, the more we realise we've got to make. So I hope you've enjoyed this, and if you have, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel, uh, because it's always very encouraging to see the support that um, you can offer in that way to um, the model making that I do, and which Bob is so expertly using to create the route and um, keep me right when I make some really <laughs> dreadful howlers. So Liverpool Overhead Railway, the project continues.